This is a fan. This is also a fan. That's a fan. Another fan. Big ass fan. Rusty fan. And when you strip it all back, CPAP machines are just fancy ass fans blowing air down a tube. I've baked you up a very special pie today. Here she is. It's a German made Leuvenstein built with a Swiss Micronel blower and perhaps the smartest automatic algorithm on the market. Yes, ResMed and Philips get all the attention. Let's take a look at this. She may not be the prettiest girl in the pub, but she's dynamite in the bedroom. And that's where it counts. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Now, I want you to imagine you're playing a round of golf, all right? And the hole, that's perfect breathing. No apneas, no interruptions, smooth airflow all night. And the course, well, that's a full night of breathing obstacles. Yeah, your apneas, your hypopneas, your rearers, your snoring, your airflow limitation. Basically, CPAP versions of your bunkers, your water hazards, your knee deep rough. And the club choice, well that my friends, is the pressure delivery. And the challenge is to get through the course into the hole using just the right amount of pressure. No more, no less. And this is where Lowenstein plays a really smart game, golf. It breaks your pressure range down into four quartiles and the pressure delivery from the device dynamically changes depending on the quartile that you're in. All right, quartile one, the tee off, the start of the night. And of course, we're pulling out our big boy, the driver. What have I got here? Tailor made, all right? We're drifting off to sleep and we get the obstructive apnea, the hypopnea, the snoring. And old mate Lowenstein goes, I don't think so. Boom, tees up, <laughs> visualizes the shot, and then boom, steady, steady. <laughs> Full send, baby. It hits that apnea with a 1.5 centimeter bump in pressure, big intense bump. And that's the same for hypopneas and periods of snoring. Now for your moderate events, such as your rearers, you're looking at a one centimeter bump. And for your mild events, I don't like calling it mild, but they are mild. Your flow limitation, your upper airway resistance, you're looking at a 0.5 centimeter bump. And you can see it here on my heat map here that I've created. All right, so here's Q1, start of the night. We've got our apneas and hypopneas, 1.5. Snoring, 1.5. Rearers, one centimeter. Flow limitation, 0 0.5. Okay, there's the heat map for you. And now we're on to quartile number two. Right, we're on the fairway, but we're still dealing with some rearers, some residual hypopneas, bit of flow limitation, all right? But now we're getting tactical, all right? We're aiming for precision. We're pulling out our seven iron, all right? We're not doing the driver anymore. And the pressure response is more moderate, less intense. And you can see it right here on the heat map. All right, so instead of being a 1.5 centimeter bump for your apneas and your hypopneas, you're now looking at a one centimeter bump. All right. Same goes for your snoring, same goes for your rearers. And now for flow limitation, there is no pressure response for flow limitation after the first quartile. Really important to know this, and I'll show you why later in the video. All right, but you can see what's happening here, yeah? You can piece it together. What's happening is as we move through the quartiles, the pressure response is getting more precise, less dramatic. Why? Because as that pressure gets higher, big jumps in pressure are gonna disturb your sleep, yeah? So we're aiming for comfort and control. That's why this is like a symphony. It's a masterpiece, it's a thing of beauty because they're not just going, yep, let's just control all apneas, hypopneas, let's just get the AHI down to zero. They're going, no, there's a patient, there's a person on the end of this bloody tube trying to sleep. Let's not blow their head off. Let's help them sleep. Yes, we want therapy, we want good breathing, 
but we also want to manage the side effects, the mask leaks. The reason compliance hasn't really changed much at all in the past 20 years. And for every 10 patients you put on CPAP, five will drop off within the first, I don't know, two years. Okay, so this is why I like this algorithm. It's measured, it's tailored, it's strategic. And now onto quartile number three. All right, we hit a good seven iron, landed just short of the green. We've pulled out our pitching wedge and we're just gonna bump and run it up onto the green, all right? So another mild response for those residual hypopneas, maybe a few wearers, maybe a little bit of snoring, all right? So the pressure response is mild. And here we are, Q3 on the heat map. We've still got a one centimeter bump for the apneas, hypopneas, a one centimeter bump for the snoring. The rearers have dropped down a little bit, 0.5 and flow limitation zero. And then last of all, we've made it onto the green. Great little chip. We're pulling out our putter. Where is it? Here it is. What the putter? What is this? What is this, a putter for ants? <laughs> Obviously the kids have been playing with my golf clubs. And now it's just very, very fine adjustments. All right, we just want to nudge it into the hole for that perfect breathing. And you can see it here. All right, apnea, apneas and hypopneas, 0.5. Snoring, 0.5. Rears, 0.5. And flow limitation, still zero. So we've talked about how Lowenstein steps things up when things are going wrong. But what does it do when things are going right? when breathing stable, because that's equally as important, yeah? When you're developing an automatic algorithm, it's not just about increasing the pressure. The whole idea of an automatic algorithm is that the pressure drops down when you don't need it. And once again, it's very dynamic, yeah? So if you're in that first quartile, it's the quartile system all over again. When you're in that first quartile, the pressure drops are gonna be more gradual, yeah? The device is thinking, it doesn't wanna to act too soon, all right? So it's gonna be more gradual in the first quartile. However, when you make it to that fourth quartile, yes, that pressure wants to drop off quite quickly because you're so high in the pressure range. Does that make sense? So like I said before, guys, it, it really is a thing of beauty. It's so well thought out, but we're gonna take it one step further because as I showed you previously, yeah? If you're having flow limitation past the first quartile, there is no pressure adjustment for flow limitation. But for some of you, you might have a lot of airflow limitation, a lot of rearers, right? Upper airway resistance syndrome and so on. So if you're getting really good results on paper, but you're still feeling like shit, then you can switch this device into a different response mode, a dynamic response mode, which is gonna change how you play the course, yeah? You've just stepped up onto the tee and you think, you know what, I reckon I can drive this green in one. I'm not gonna lay up. I'm just gonna go bang, nice and aggressive. You're gonna poof, try and uh, hit that hole in one. That's what it does when you switch this device into dynamic mode. And I'll show you that on the heat map here. Now everything's pretty much the same, but you'll remember previously in standard response mode, once we hit Q2, there was no response to airflow limitation. Beyond that, now we have a 0.5 bump in response to airflow limitation. It's responding now. If you're having it, it will increase the pressure. Same goes for Q3, but it's a little bit softer at 0.2 centimeters. And then once you hit Q4, it will not respond to airflow limitation, all right? Something else I will mention is the response for snoring is also faster. Um, but the cool thing is, is you can change this, all right? You can see it for yourself. And I'll show you it on Sleep HQ if you're interested. Now, Sleep HQ is a platform I developed to empower you guys so you have access to all your uncensored data from your Lowenstein, from your ResMed, from your Philips, from your Fisher & Paykel, all the stuff the manufacturers don't want you to see, I built you a platform so you can see it and I gave it to you for free. So go check it out, sleephq.com. It's easy as, you just grab your SD card, whoop, there's not one in here because it's in my computer because I was just doing this, pull it out, plug it into your computer, drag the files in and you're good to go. All right, let's check out Sleep HQ. 
All right, so what have we got here? We've got standard response mode, all right? And here's two obstructive apneas here. See that, OA, OA. And here's the pressure jump. See how it's jumping up here? Now in quartile one, what did we say before? 1.5 centimeter response, and you can see it here. So EPAP starts at four, and it goes to 5.5. 1.5 centimeter jump. But now we're in quartile two. Yeah, look at this, the pressure min is six, the pressure max is 12.5. So you can think of quartile one as six to eight, all right? Quartile two, eight to 10, quartile three, 10 to 12. I've stuffed that up, but you get the idea. You just break down that range into four equal components, okay? Remember that. Now, the, the second jump here, now that we're in quartile two, goes from 5.5, yeah buddy? Um, something's happening from the iPad. The iPad, what happened? Come down here, come down here and chat to dad. Come down here and say hello to everyone. They wanna see you. Come down and say hello. Come up here. They wanna see you, they don't wanna see me. They wanna see my little buddies. Hey, here he is. Hey look, you're on, you're on TV. You're on YouTube. This is my little mate, Jack, named after his great granddad. And his middle name's Nicholas, <laughs> named after me. And this is little, little Haley and little Zach. Come in, Zachy, say hello. He's a, he's, a little. he's a little ripper. He came out six weeks early, just before Christmas. And we're just super happy to have him. You want to say hello to everyone? Give them a wave? Say hello. Hello. You blow them a kiss. <laughs> Good boy. Can I come in in a minute and fix it? Or bring it out. Go and get it. Bring it out to me. And I'll fix it for you. The iPad. Deary me. So you can see here now, it's just a one centimeter jump. Yeah. The pressure response is getting softer because we're moving up the quartiles. And you can see here, there is some airflow limitation. See this? FL, 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 FL. There is a bit of upper airway resistance, but look at the pressure. See how it's not responding to that airflow limitation? Why? Because we're in Q2. And as I said before, it's not gonna respond to airflow limitation in Q2 unless we're in the dynamic response, okay? You might not need it, guys. And that's why it's great to monitor things like your blood oxygen, because you don't have to have perfect, perfect breathing. That's not what it's about. It's about managing stress, managing sleep, making sure that for the majority of the night, your breathing is regular. A little bit of upper airway resistance, who cares? Right? That's where ResMed got it wrong. So, I'll just do another thing. What have we got? Oh, Mum's gonna help you. Thanks, okay. thanks, Mum. Mum's gonna help you, big boy. Thank you, and then I'll come in and give you a nice big cuddle. <laughs> right, this is cool. So now we are in the dynamic mode, all right? And what you can see here is the pressure doing its small bumps, all right? So it goes from 8.25 to 8.75. That's that 0.5 centimeter jump in either the Q1 or Q2 with the dynamic response, but then it moves into Q3 up here, and look, now we've only got a 0.2 centimeter jump. All right, so you're starting to piece it together. I'll tell you why it's important in a minute, why you learn this. All right, now what else have I got here? Okay, once again, another example. This time we have these H flags, hypopneas. We're in Q1, and we get a 1.5 centimeter jump in the pressure. We hit Q2, and now we've just got a one centimeter jump, okay? So you start to see what Lowenstein's doing here. Now, the reason I wanna tell you about this is important because you might've seen some of my videos where I'm talking about how to fine tune a ResMed device. A freaking frog, <laughs> a freaking frog here now. 
fine tune the ResMed device. And what I'm telling you is you need to run a really tight range there because you know the ResMed goes too high on the up and then it drops too low. So you wanna sort of like narrow that range down. With Lowenstein, that's not the case. You really don't want a range uh, closer than maybe, I don't know, six to eight centimeters, right? You wanna keep that width in the range, the pressure range between your pressure min and your pressure max, because if you squish it down to like two or three centimeters, like many do with ResMed, you need to, then what's gonna happen? You're gonna be jumping through the quartiles too quickly, yeah? You're gonna get a 1.5 centimeter jump that's gonna put you from quartile one <laughs> up to quartile four, and it's gonna throw everything out of order. All right, so with this algorithm, you can afford to have a wider pressure range compared with your ResMed devices because it's so good, right? Something you might like to take into consideration is, same goes with most automatic CPAP machines. They're pretty terrible at the start of the night. And that sleep-wake breathing where it goes a bit shaky, they can bump that pressure up pretty quickly. So I would recommend having that ramp in there, but experiment with a wider pressure range with this device. Right? And then you get to sit back and see it on Sleep HQ and take a look and see, you know, what it's responding to, all right? It's really, really cool to see. All right, here you can see it here. All right, so this is the pressure changing through the night in response to airflow limitation and all the breathing events. It's, it's playing a round of golf and it's playing it very well. All right, so here's the take home message because my little boy needs help with his iPad. Not all auto algorithms are built the same and Leuvenstein proves that. Whether you're playing it safe with standard mode or going for the green in one with dynamic mode, this machine gives you options and the power to fine tune your therapy. And when you pair that with Sleep HQ, you're not flying blind. You can see every swing, every shot, every pressure move. It's like having a really good caddy. Review your night like a pro. Compare modes, spot patterns, make adjustments because great therapy isn't just about pressure, it's about precision. Leuvenstein gives you the tools, Sleep HQ gives you the insights, and that's how you master the course. Have a great night. Cheers.